Welcome everyone. And uh, we are here today for our sixth installment of our web series on Indigenous Women Chefs, sponsored by the Annual Conference on Native American Nutrition. I'm Mindy Kurzer. I chair the planning committee for that conference. I want to make sure that everyone knows that we are going to be holding an in-person event here in Minnesota in May of 2022. So we're just about to sign the contract. As soon as we do, we'll send out an email and let everyone know. Today, we have two wonderful chefs who are going to be doing our uh, webinars today. Our chef who will be cooking is Chef Tanya Brandt, who is a Mohawk Nation chef. She's been working in the food industry for over 26 years. After becoming a mother, Tanya switched her focus to the foods of her people and childhood. She works closely with her mother at Mohawk Seed Keepers Garden. And having been brought up with traditional foods, she's always brought passion to her dishes through culture. She started Yawekan Foods in 2014, which is a catering company serving traditional foods to the community. The result is of all of this work is Yawekan by Chef Tanya Brandt, a first of its kind food offering on our home territory of six nations of the Grand River in Southern Ontario. Yawekan opened its doors this past fall offering small batch cooking and new menus daily. It's proud to offer menus and service in the Mohawk language. Tanya is looking forward to expanding her company again in the very near future. And you can find out more about her food journey through her YouTube, Facebook, Instagram pages, and we'll post some of those links in the chat function. Today's commentator is Chef Crystal Wapipa. Crystal Wapipa is an enrolled member of the Kickapoo Nation of Oklahoma. She was born and raised alongside a multi-tribal community in Oakland, California, where she learned ancestral food waste, as well as the formalities of running her own catering and food business. She's the first native chef to appear on the Food Network and specifically on the show Chopped, which I love to watch. Crystal's passion to create food by honoring the origins and land of each ingredient, as well as cultivating connection to indigenous farmers and land stewards makes her a unique game changer in the food industry. Crystal and Wapipa's kitchen are the embodiment of how food can heal communities and society at large. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Chef Tanya Brandt. Tanya, you'll need to unmute yourself and Crystal, you as well. Uh, Crystal will be commenting and fielding your questions. So feel free to put questions at any time in the Q&A. Uh, and also, if you need a live transcription, because Crystal, uh, because Tanya, as you can see, is in a working kitchen, there may be some background noise. And so if you would like to, you can click on live transcript at the bottom of your screen and enable the live transcript, you'll see subtitles. So if you need that, feel free to do that. So now I turn it over to you. Welcome, Crystal, and welcome, Tanya. It's all yours, Tanya. So hello everyone, my name is Tanya Brent. I am Mohawk Turtle Clan and I'm from Oshmegan or Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and that's in Southern Ontario. And it's kind of a, a pretty day out today. It's a little overcast. So we're expecting some much needed rain later. Um, we're kind of having drought conditions right now. Um, on Six Nations territory. So it's definitely needed for our crop and we're happy to see that again. Um, also joining me today is Crystal Wafi Paw. Crystal, are you with us? Yes, I am. How are you doing? Good, and I'm so happy to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> I miss um, you and I love you. And so I love Crystal's you. a good friend of mine. Um, yeah, Crystal, I'll let you introduce yourself a little there. Oh, Hi, my name is Chef Crystal Wapipa. I am Kickapoo and I'm Sacking Fox. I'm from Oakland, California. And um, I'm just excited to actually commentary for my 
dear good friend Tanya and I'm excited to be in her kitchen and I think this is going to be an awesome awesome <clears throat> cooking demo that she's going to do because one she's in her kitchen and two I think she's a phenomenal indigenous chef she's a phenomenal mother and she's also my sister <laughs> Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'm ask you, this is what I wanted to ask you um, beforehand, but I said, no, 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 don't do it. Um, I wanted to say, hey, what are you making? And, you know, I just love all the dishes that you do create and you make and where you get it from. So I'm excited to hear what you're going to make. Okay, thank you. So, yes, I'll do that. I'll introduce what it is that we're going to make today. So we're actually making today is what's what we're serving for lunch today. So it's one of our specials that we do at Yuego is we don't have a set menu. We do have a lot of things up front, fresh salads, desserts, things like that. Um, and we also make all of our juices and we have a lot of like coffee drinks and things like that. Um, what I do normally is we do three um, offerings a day, um, different specials. So the one that we're going to make for everybody today is a seed encrusted uh, pickerel. And it's going to have a sassafras and strawberry glaze on top with some fresh strawberries. And then it's also going to be served on top of us. Um, we're just going to make like a quick saute with some hominy corn fiddleheads and just make a nice bed for it to put it on. And hopefully it'll be nice and pretty. And if anybody is uh, really interested in the recipe later on, uh, this recipe, uh, along with, uh, you know, the hominy, is going to be on... Um, part of Chatelaine magazine, that's a, a Canadian women's magazine, it's kind of like the Canadian cosmopolitan, <laughs> um, next month, so the month of July, that this recipe will be available in that publication, so go buy your baked scenes, everybody, it's great, I'm excited to be, um, just to be asked, Chatelaine magazine, was, I was pretty, uh, pretty honored with the last thing, so, um, all right, so, I guess we can start doing some cooking now, right? <laughs> so what I was going to do is just kind of go through everything and we'll talk about the ingredients. We first let me kind of share some stories that are maybe other ways that we can use those ingredients. And I think at the end of the day, that's the best thing that we can do. Because that way we share what it is we're doing and how we're learning and think of new ways that we can use those individual ingredients when we're doing, when we're doing our cooking. So, um, Wes, can you... Uh, Sorry, I'm having I'm having my actual internet installed right now. So <laughs> I was like, oh, they could have came in the morning. It would have been all fine. But no, I'm just using my cell phone today. <laughs> so um, being a chef and multitasking with everything and then also creating your dish. What inspired you? First question. For this dish? Um, okay, so really it was the time of season because Shadowlane had asked me for a recipe and I'm um, I'm really inspired by what are, whatever it is that's in season, like what we're doing right now, right? Because that's what's most important for our diets that we're eating seasonally. And, um, you know, I just kind of feel like those plants come out at different times. We, and, and those, are the, you know, we consume, we're told to consume as much as we can when things are in season and our body stores all these things, all these nutrients and vitamins and things. Um, so, yeah, when I was originally asked, it was March, so we're in the middle of our spearing season. So we do spear um, pickerel, or it's called a bala, is another name for it that people might be more familiar with. Um, so that's a huge fish for our area and for our people. And my father's territory, which is Tindanega territory, it's about three hours north of here. Um, that's a huge spearing um, community. It's like a whole fish community. So this fish came from there. Um, some of the young guys brought it for me. They gave me, you know, these big bags of so they're so they're using it quite a bit because it's in season. This is our, our fish type of season, right? Where we're using that. Um, I just kind of got a fillet here. The fish themselves, I guess, was just a nice, you know, oh, I know. fillet. It's a little bit darker on the, that side there. Um, but the actual fishes themselves are huge and terrifying. Like you look at them and their faces are like, like they have teeth. <laughs> so they're a little scary. And I remember just like as a kid, my dad would be spearing. They'd be like, just don't let them go back in the water. But they're just like shooting these like, you know, 40 pound fish at us and we're screaming on shore. So <laughs> I don't know if they had to do that or if they just did that for fun. But <laughs> so that was the fish that we were going to work with today. Um, so just to make like how we're going to impress this is just like we kind of use here a house variety of, of seeds so our house variety of seeds that goes on a lot of our salads and things is just a mix of three different seeds which are pumpkin seeds hemp hearts and sunflower seeds so i picked those mostly because you know they're indigenous but they're nutritional quality as well right sunflowers are super huge in in iron 
right? Like if you're taking a little steak here and, this, and a handful of sunflower seeds, you're going to get the same amount of iron in that. And, um, you know, it's good for people that are in need making the indie seeds are going to be good for that. Um, pumpkin seeds as well. They're super nutritious. Even like if you put it next to a squash and you have the seeds, the seeds are going to be like three times more nutrient dense than that just squash itself. Um, so that's like a huge powerhouse for protein and, and, and all that jazz. Um, and then hemp hearts, um, I guess is kind of a gray area for indigenous people, but we're just going to use them though. <laughs> but once again, I actually like working with hemp hearts because if you're not a big seedy person, um, just the mouthfeel, you don't even notice that they're there and they're so nutritious that it's just like, it's a good way to, to get yourself into that idea of, uh, okay, I got to get used to eating all these seeds and stuff now. Because I know we're all always working on our diets and how we can introduce those seeds to, so we're getting more nutrients and vitamins. Um, so we just took that and uh, those seeds, and I don't know where I put my pestle, but <laughs> we just ground it all up, right? So it's just like this nice flower now, right? And it's kind of mealy. I'll put it up here, see if I can, you can see it is still fairly mealy. Like it's not a super duper fine powder. But that's about the texture that you're looking for. Because either way, it just needs to stick to your, um, to your fish. There. I think all, all the ingredients are fine there. Yeah. Okay. So this fish, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to use some ranch powder. I don't know if you've seen those. It's just pretty dark. Those are like the regular ranch, and then we crush them all up to make a spice out of it. So this is the whole plant. Um, we kind of have our whole little indigenous food section over there. So these are what they look like when they're dried. It's a whole leaf, and those those grow outside, right? We see that those are like literally growing everywhere. The little bulbs, I'll take those and dry those too, and just throw them in like I'm grazing meat. Um, if you want a nice, like a salt that doesn't have a color, that's, you know, your, your go-to for that. Um, that and then, yeah, any long-term, long cooking stuff that those are good <laughs> to put that in there. Um, so ramp powder has like a garlicky, it's like an onion garlicky taste together. So this can kind of replace those two things. If you're trying to indigenize your spice cabinet, um, this was something that was good for me for getting rid of garlic powder and onion powder and any recipes that those are together. Um, just we have to be mindful of like the color like if it's something you might not want green on it might <laughs> it might not be all that that you want to check it so the only thing I'm going to do is just going to dust a little bit of this on the fish just on one side just need to be on both and I also have some smoked salt here and I'm just going to do a, a touch of that and I'm using Sakari Botanicals so I've got this this is the cedar smoked salt and those are available from um, sakaribotanicals.com, I believe is her website. That's uh, Spring Alaska there. I, I love her um, cedar smoked salt. It's really good. And also, yeah. can, you, can you do me a favor? Can you name the fish one more time in the magazine? Um, it's pickerel. Um, the fish is pickerel or walleye is a more common name for it. That people, like if you're in the store wanting to find it, then you might um, do both of those names. And also the name of the magazine is Chatelaine. Ooh, I know it just sounds so funny. Yeah, like it. Sex in the city ish. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so for me, in an effort just to reduce things like um, egg, flour, sugar, so all that thing, we don't put nothing on the fish. We just put it right into the seeds. Mm -hmm. um, if you're at home and if you're having problems, like it's not sticking very well for you, you can see I'm just patting it down. Mm -hmm. um, like you can do like an egg wash if you want first but it you know it gets it pretty good so and then i'll show you another little trick which will be just to put some on like when you're cooking it put some on your plate here and it'll it'll bake too while it's baking okay because sometimes it's it's really iffy like sometimes it's really pretty it sticks out amazing other times it don't so you might want to use an egg wash but like i said this for me um at the restaurant keeps it so it's uh still an egg free option yeah, so, because we do get a lot of dietary restrictions and, and that sort of thing. So I just have that on there. And we're going to take that and throw that into the oven. And that's going to bake there. Um, and we'll let that go. I don't know if you have any favorite fish stories, Crystal, or anything that you, uh, what okay. you like serving. Because you're in California, so you get all the fun stuff, right? We're just like white fish people around here. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, what about, um, well, we didn't throw that. Alaska and so we actually had um, we had a lot of fish 
But I like to make your bacon the fish because I bake my fish also, which is really, it's it's really good. And just like you were talking about the egg free and just because one, you have a restaurant two people come in and you just kind of, I, I love that. I love the hemp that you have in there. And it's, I feel like it's a really awesome binder and I wish I can yeah. take I wish I can taste it. <laughs> no, but well, I'll be sure to send you that recipe. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, yeah. So we, we had a lot of fish recently, and I, I probably eat fish like um, maybe, I'm going to say um, well, about two, three times a month. I love fish. And you know me, I love salmon. You know, you can get yeah. it, especially the white fish that you're doing. And so, yeah, I'm excited to see when it comes to that. So you're on the West Coast, though. You get the amazing salmon, right? And yeah. it's fresh yeah. and all those things. So I yeah. kind of noticed that. I blame it on the fact that I'm an interior Indian, that we're not big on, like, seafood and stuff in the area. So that's something with the restaurant. Like, when I want to try stuff that might have like, shrimp in it or, you know, any other kind of fish. Some people are kind of leery at first. I think they're at a place where they trust me now, though. So they're like, okay, that was all right last time. You can, you know, keep your tough ground, especially cooking on reserves, right? Because everyone's going to tell you exactly what it is they think about what you're doing. So, <laughs> but it's okay. I like that. I need that. I need to, you know, it helps us all grow and make our, our businesses better that way. So that's what I tell people. Plus, yeah, I no, I'm open to everything. No, exactly. And it's more funner because you can get so creative, especially with indigenous ingredients and actually how you serve it. And people are really surprised. Like just yeah. for instance, like this um, binder that you have right there, I, I'm really excited. I can't wait for the recipe. I'm going to try yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll get that out of our way. You can probably just put this with the other stuff now. But because <laughs> we're still making fish right now. <laughs> so we're just getting, um, we're about an hour ahead of Central Time or Eastern Standard Time. So we're just getting to the end of our, our lunch rush kind of thing right now. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to talk a bit about the glaze that we put on there. And I'm going to show you how it was done just because I already have it made because I needed it for lunch. Um, it was nothing too intimidating because we just brewed some sassafras tea. So anybody, um, if you've never worked with sassafras, I kind of have one I don't like right now which is a really nice fine grind um I prefer working with the sticks or like the smaller like chunks I like and sassafras is one of those things you can boil it and boil it and boil it and it's going to keep intensifying in flavor and like a lot of times when I'm making at home big like I'm doing juices I'll just put it on low my stove on low all night and just leave it on there and let it go and then when you wake up you get this really super rich red color and the colors look so beautiful about it and the taste is just like there's nothing that tastes like it, right? Because you can take like sassafras and sarsaparilla. That's that taste that they, uh, they can eat your way, right? And I think that Hires Company is the only one actually that actually uses that everywhere else is synthetic flavors now. So that's unfortunate, but um, I know down in the South as well, I believe uh, picking sassafras is illegal now with these sassafras trees, um, which is sad. But, you know, like everything, people better respect. <laughs> but I don't know. I just heard you can... I don't know, make drugs with it or something. So <laughs> apparently you can do that with a treat. But anyways, the tea is fine. It's very good. So I'm going to grab that. I got it right here. I just have a bit that I have set aside. Um, I'm going to put it into this cup so it's a nicer background so we can share it. So what I did was I took the tea and just brewed it up like a regular tea. Uh -huh. And then we just thickened it with cornstarch. And that's all we did was once it was ready, um, I threw about five or six berries in here, probably about three cups of tea. And just like um, I had frozen berries, so I just let them fall apart. And then I mashed them a bit. So when we're done, it almost looks like yogurt or something. Okay. So ideally, this is what I don't like about the, the fine stuff, is it doesn't get that nice bright red that I like. Yeah. So it's more of a pinky color, which is nice. And then you can see, you can still see the chunks of, of strawberry that's in there, right? So we just let it flake apart. And I hit it with a shot of... Um, maple syrup as well right because yes. you want to sweeten that because nice sweet fishes i'm just going to leave this here for when the fish is done mm. and also just to intensify and for the look we're going to put some extra um strawberries as well onto the fish and then put the glaze on top and that's just so the the heat doesn't kill um your strawberries right like it cooks them so fast mm -hmm. um so i thought maybe we could talk about strawberries for a minute because they're my favorite fruit uh, <laughs> 
And so for hundred and <laughs> yeah, so for so for the hundred and shoni, these are part of our creation story, right? Is is strawberries and. Um, in our creation story, when Sky Woman fell, um, she gave birth to a daughter, and her daughter in turn became pregnant. And when she passed away during childbirth, her mother buried her, and she buried her with these seeds that she had from when she fell from the sky. Rope. So um, when we talk about that uh, heart, the strawberry was what grew from her heart, right? Mm -hmm. And we call that heart medicine today. And um, just there's a lot of teachings that go wrong with that, with that being our first berry. When, when we do our ceremonies, even that very is a welcoming, right? Like it's done its job, it's been recognized and it's a welcoming part of very to come on to do their job and stuff. Um, so, and a couple of things of berries. Um, I like it because it represents family, right? Our berries represent families because they rarely grow from seed. They grow from runners, right? They just have runners that go out. So one seed can mother generations in an entire field. Right, from a single plant and that's reminiscent of our family structures and how we have family but we're still always connected in some way shape or form so we do have a lot of um things that come along with strawberries and their teachings and um i know like anishinaabe they do their berry fasts and things and i can say a long time ago this was probably the only sweet thing you had so to go a whole year not having these was you know that yeah. taught you some strength i think <laughs> so that was just a touch a bit on uh, strawberries that we'll be using today. And then that was the other thing for the magazine. Like I said, I knew it was in March, it was the season, and then our strawberry season would be next. And that's when the, the magazine would be coming out. So that's how I chose to, to do these things. <laughs> uh, so by the magic of TV, I have a piece of fish that's already cooked. <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to do, we're going to saute our, our other stuff now too, though. <laughs> okay. Can you name the magazine one more time? We want to get it down. <laughs> Chatelaine, it's very feminine. <laughs> Chatelaine, yeah. Okay. So I just have a, um, we're going to do a quick saute on some hominy. So what I did was I just got some sunflower oil in here right now. Just regular pan, just some regular hominy corn. We have, uh, you know, like whatever you use in your area. You can use whatever corn you want for this. It can be our traditional white corn, black corn, whatever corn that you have. Yeah. It's going to work. <laughs> well, maybe not popcorn, but everything else will work <laughs> as long as it's been mixed with lies. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be quick saute. I'm just going to saute this. I have some fiddleheads. Um, pretty sure those are pretty in season everywhere right now, yeah. all the little fiddleheads. Um, so, yeah, so plants are a lot of the times that they're more nutritious at the seed because they're so small and everything's so um, condensed. That's the, you know, the nutrients are as well. Um, so when picking these, you'll see them outside, they grow into a fern tree, like the little, little fern plants, and, and they completely unravel, and that's how they come out. Mm -hmm. So when you're picking them in the wild, if you're preserving them, so these ones were frozen because they were picked from early in the season, our fiddlehead season is done now. Mm -hmm. um, these fiddleheads, uh, just to process them quickly in case anybody is like harvesting on their own at home. Um, you do kind of want to knock off a bit of that, um, the brown paper that kind of grows in between these. Um, so what I do is I take them and I, I'll cut these edges off just to make sure they're nice because they'll brown right away. Um, throw it into water bath and just really, just be really aggressive with it and it breaks all that stuff off. And to me, it looks like fish food and it tastes like it too. <laughs> so I try to get all that off. So I'll rinse it real nice two or three times and then um, put these on a sheet pan like if one thin layer sheet pan, freeze it, and then you can take them, bunch them all up and put them into like a Ziploc bag or whatever. That way they're not gonna be like in a, a solid rock. And yeah, just so if you would have to clean some of these if you wanna have them. And also at this stage, oh, I didn't mention, sorry, blanch them. 100% yeah. you do have to blanch these. Um, I'll just use salted water and blanch them for about five minutes. They'll turn a lighter color, so you'll see. And then even once you cool them down with cool water, it'll even, again, get even brighter, brighter color and then come out like that. Um, but you definitely have to blanch them before. Um, these ones, I don't think it's as necessary, but the other, like the other types of ones, they're still edible, but you do have to, um, yeah. make sure that you blanch them. They have like, um, a certain, like the, you can tell on the flavor, they have like a certain flavor. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It's like a bitter. I don't know how you would describe, well, yeah, well, these ones, what would you say an asparagus and just tastes like a green thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say like an asparagus green beanie kind of taste. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, for sauteing them, I'm just going to put them together just like that. 
Beautiful. Throw it all in the same same plate. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little bit of the ranch and the the um, cedar salt on it, and that's just to kind of tie it in with the other dish, right? That we're using some of the same seasonings, so they impart their own flavor, but then they do have this little area where they're somewhat similar, <laughs> and that's just to help our flavors bind together. So I'm gonna take this over to the stove, and I'm gonna let that saute for a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'll let my assistant Dallas here <laughs> saute that up for me quick. <laughs> Um, thank you, Dallas. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> they said thank you, Dallas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that on its own is just going to be a quick saute, mostly just to heat it up. If you'd like, um, you can, like, uh, ideally, because we're being non indigenous today, if it was me at home, that would be butter in that pan, not <laughs> sunflower oil. Just to be honest, it goes with corn. <laughs> yeah. So, um, after that, and, and yeah, feel free to put anything if you're a huge onion fan, if uh, you got vegetables kicking around, it's perfect time to dice them up, throw them in, and that's just going to make a heartier dish for you over when you get done. We're just keeping it kind of simple and plain. We'll make a nice little dish out of it and see, <laughs> see how that goes. Um, I even had trouble finding a dish in my restaurant. I didn't have any dishes. <laughs> I didn't know that until today because <laughs> we're a takeout <laughs> restaurant. So we have no need for for proper dishes, I don't know. Yeah. I was like, you don't even have a dinner plate here. So I found this one, which is actually plastic. <laughs> so, can you put the okay. uh, dish Oh, oh yeah. Look at it. Okay, hope I don't drop it off the plate. Oh, how I'll cool. hold it. Oh, I love but you it. See how, yeah. You can see how all those seeds kind of stuck on there uh -huh. and it's a nice consistency. So it's all, it's all baked through. The easiest mm -hmm. way to check it is just the, if you're not comfortable, you can temp it, use your, your temperature, you'll see foods, I believe 185, mm -hmm. um, but you can kind of break it and you'll see, like you'll see that it's opening it there. So let everybody get one last good look at that fish. <laughs> Ooh, it's still wow. And if, yeah. You know what? I find baking more than um, frying or um, I feel better baking because it can actually keep everything in place. And you can yeah. add the texture that you're going for and even the flavor, because sometimes when we fry it, it totally takes everything away. You know? Yeah, it's not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say with this too. You can pan fry it. It's mm -hmm. um, definitely is sometimes just easier for people. I know like, I don't want to turn my my oven on right now. It's 30 yeah. degrees outside. So um, yeah, it can definitely be pan fried, but like you said, it's not going to have that super pretty finish on it because once you flip it, it's going to, you know, get moved around a little, but you know, it's still gonna taste good. That's what's important, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm done with these now. Um, probably almost ready to plate. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to touch on there, Crystal, for uh, any of these ingredients that we're working on today. I don't think so. Was there any questions? We can get a question or two while we're sauteing up. Yes, actually, I was just looking at a question. Um, somebody's asking what is the, um, actually the, is it the mixture of, um, of the ingredients that's on the um, white fish. Can you go through the directions? Again? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so for the fish, what we did, we just cleaned it. We used a piece of pickerel or walleye is a more common name. Um, mm -hmm. And then we took a seed mixture of pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and hemp hearts. And then we took them and put a mortar pestle and just broke those up and made a nice flour out of it. But what you seen, it was still fairly mealy. Like it doesn't gotta be super fine. Like you're gonna get, that way you'll get a nice texture out of it as well. Or these won't be chewy because they've been baked, but they'll have a nice tenderness to them where they won't be, are like, you know, crunchy, I guess you'd say. Um, but then the outside kind of bakes nice and dry. And then it's, it's, um, it's just a nice texture, right? So that goes with that fish. And this too, this fish is very versatile. So if you have it like this, if you want to put it on a salad, if you want to have it with like a rice pilaf, um, wild rice is definitely a good dish to have it as a side. We're doing a hominy today. Um, you can throw like rants or whatever um, greenery that is in season for you, whether it might be like stinging nettle, we're going to use fiddleheads today. So it's just any way to get out there and see what you have. Even the dandelion greens, like these, they can be sauteed into that. Right. And so anything that you want to put into it, like that's just expanding your palate. And I, I, I'm not a big recipe chef. I hate working with recipes. That's why when people ask me, I'm always like, oh, but <laughs> the reason for that is because every time you cook, you want to try something and you want to make it better next time. Right? Like, how would I make this a little bit better? So we're always constantly tweaking the recipes. And to me, recipes kind of hold us back and you're stagnant and you don't move from that recipe or it only teaches you how to use one thing in one way. 
And um, I like to encourage people just to get in the kitchen and mix it up, see what you come up with, and really think about those flavors and how you define your palate, right? Like, if you, you try something and you're like, is that flavor one dimensional? It might not make sense, but when you're trying it, you're like, you know what? This is good, but it's flat, right? It's just like it needs something else, whether it needs a kick or it might need some seasoning. Ooh, voila. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, I just cooked this like this. <laughs> so anyway, so now that you saute that all up, I'll bring it right up to the, the screen here and you can see. Yeah. So you see a little bit of that ramp that's in there. You get the salt and then all of the the fiddleheads are nicely uh, sauteed up as well. Yeah. Mm, it smells great. You guys can't smell this, but I can. <laughs> I so can I wanted to. I'm going <laughs> to um, Tanya, we also don't break this piece of fish. Somebody's asking, what temp did you bake the fish in? Sorry, what temperature? Yes. Yeah, um, just 350. Pretty much everything is always 350, no matter what it is. And this can be baked in a regular oven. This one particularly was done in the convection oven. It's done in like 10 minutes. Okay. Um, uh, a regular oven um, might take you closer to 20, but fish cooks so fast as well, right? So I wanted to try and clean this stuff a little. Okay. And then we have another. I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll be honest. I'm not an Instagram chef, but I don't want to tell people. I don't feed Instagram. I feed crowds. So my plating is not the best in the world. But <laughs> as long as it tastes good, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, that is easy. Ain't that, that much. So I'm going to put that fish back on there. <laughs> okay, so now that we got that on there, that's all good, just like that. And I'm going to top it with some. Um, I'm going to put some of these strawberries on here just to cover it, like go through the whole piece of fish. Mm -hmm. Lots of berries. Can't have too many berries. Wow. Not possible. <laughs> wow. And then it's just like that light sweetness. You get in the end, you get that. Uh, um, that's a fresh yes. <laughs> really having a hard time trying to describe how the flavor works. Um, but that profile is really different. And like I said, that mixed with the sarsaparilla is what they use for root beer. And I was kind of like, well, I don't really know what sarsap sarsaparilla is for. The first time I ever seen use it was Pop Smurf. So, <laughs> I can, you know, I can, um, okay, um, a recipe. Um, I can totally take the fish with the sassafras and the strawberry. I mean, I mean, I can take yeah. it. That's a good combination. It's I light, think. yeah. Yeah. yeah and then, it's light and works nice with the fish. Oh, wow. Yes. I can see that. Ooh. Little fried yeah. fish. That's the on the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> I've never tried on like fried, fried fish. But... Okay. So I think this is our plate here. I'll uh, actually help me to pull the phone up and now. Okay. Everybody. Okay. So, wow. okay, so that's our plate there. You see all the strawberries on top of the fish. Um, I'm a big fan of adding sweet with, um, with a lot of our fishes. Um, we also do one here too. We use blackberries and wild plums, mm. and we do a, um, a dish as well. Um, and just another, like I said, another topping for fish. Uh, we'll even put that one on salmon too. It works really well. And it's yeah. the same way. Like I said, we made the glaze. We just took a tea and just thickened it with cornstarch. That's the only thing we did. And I happened to put a couple of strawberries in there too, just to be fun. And, and it isn't really necessary because like, you're going to be putting it with strawberries anyways. But um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's any questions about the dish, but uh, I think that's about all we wanted to do here today. <laughs> No, I, I love all those flavors and how they're all combined. And especially when it comes with the fiddleheads and the strawberries, that is such, yeah. Uh-huh, I want that recipe, definitely. And I'm <laughs> going to go through the little questions. We have actually six questions. Yeah. Um, we, already answered, okay. we already answered two of them, but somebody was asking about, of course, the smoked cedar salt. Do you use dry in the cedar? Um, we can go ahead and talk about the cedar salt, which is the bombs, of course. Yeah. Um, well, um, this one I used was from Sakari. Mm -hmm. So if you want to smoke salt at home, you can see she even has little pieces of cedar in there, and I believe lavender. Um, 
So, okay, sorry. Um, if you want to smoke any salt yourself, um, I would suggest using like a sea salt. I've never really tried it with like a Himalayan salt or anything like that. I wouldn't go for like the iodized salt. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can just put it on a tray in your oven. Um, or like if you have a barbecue, right? If you're a barbecue or a smoker, you can put, just put it onto a baking sheet, put that baking sheet on your barbecue and then um, just make pats, right? Like where you take like the, the wood chips and put them inside of like some tin foil. You can soak some if you want. I usually mix soaked and dried ones. So then it burns, but it'll burn slower. And then you're just going to leave it in your barbecue for a while. It's just going to, it's just going to get all that smoky flavor from it. Um, this one's a cedar smoked salt. So you might want to use it of wood chips. You might want to use cedar for that. And like how she has here, um, added some to it as well. Um, but yeah, like a cedar smoked salt are a pretty easy thing to do that anybody can do at home. So, um, I encourage you to try. <laughs> yes. And it's also, uh, take me. <laughs> it's, it's also great topper and, um, you don't really need that much. You just kind of top it just to sprinkle a little bit on there and it's yeah. Good, just a good flavor and then we have another question yeah. I like this question this is a good one um is there any good credible sources for wild rice I've heard it's becoming industrialized by pre preference to buy this person preference to buy from a local grower I am what ooh, ooh, I am on the east is he saying the east coast let me see sorry I'm having all these questions pop up and I lost it <laughs> So uh, yeah, well, for wild rice, yes, you're right that um, commercial varieties that you're going to see are um, genetically modified seed now, which is unfortunate to see that, but um, that's our reality. And um, in Canada, I'm not sure what it is in the U.S. right now, but uh, wild rice is going for about $15 a pound, and it might be even more if it's hand harvested. Um, so there is a lot that it... Um, well, it's hard, right? All of this is it's not easy work to do. Uh, one of the people that I know that's local to my area is um, James Wittungs. I think that's how you say his last name, but he owns, it's called Black Duck Wild Rice. Mm. So he, by, I believe, Rice Lake um, in Ontario. Uh, I think he has a Facebook page, but that's one that I know that's a hand harvested rice. Winona LeDuc has her, um, what is that one called? The Harvest something harvest I'm, I'm, but they got the white the white earth um farm project where they do like they do hemp wild rice and they also sell some um things like uh sumac jam and they just have a few products that they do but they're all perfect like amazing products and that's one thing that i do really like about indian country is that everybody's products are so amazing like even like like spring stuff like she does their like, packaging and stuff but it's, it's the quality of the ingredient that to me, like you can't replace that, right? Like the quality of your ingredients. Yeah. So, no, if there's any more questions, I hope that answered it for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, actually, there is. I have one. This this question right here is from. Oh, good one. Um, I'm having. I had one of a person just asked, could you use acorn flour for the fish? And I'm gonna say definitely. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see why not, but I haven't specifically done it. I'm not really sure the texture of how that works. So I actually do have a big bag that uh, uh, Rick Hollis gave me of uh, of acorn flour. So I'm excited to uh, try yeah. some things with that. But uh, but yeah, I don't see why not. Like if you wanted to add to that seed mixture, I didn't do it here because I try to be conscious of um, allergies and stuff. So like things like walnuts and um, even like almonds, things like that. Like, there's no reason why you can't throw that all in there. And like you said, the nutritional contents just gonna just gonna make it better, right? And uh, I I just have to be conscious of these nuts and stuff in, in our facility. Um, I try to make. I love using them, but you know it's, it's hard. But walnuts is a good a good thing to use for that. Um, and black walnuts, if you can get them, black walnuts are indigenous to here as opposed to the commercial varieties that you find are from Europe. Um, but you'll see that that that's for us. For like white people or put it is showing we actually use those for part of the meal that like formula that we use for babies right and they still tell you how a, a walnut looks like a little brain in in its brain food right it's high really high in omegas especially black walnuts but um, yeah those are the things we use for our, our brain food formulas and, um, so we also have a question um actually from mildred um she's saying that she loves catfish um would this work in the be grilled as for this recipe since you baked it 
Yes. Yep. That's definitely um, easy. Like I said, we bake it because we're doing high volume cooking. Um, but yeah, pan searing it, you can, uh, even if you want to like put it on a piece of foil onto a barbecue, um, it, it might fall a bit apart on a barbecue because of the way that crust is, but you then you might want to do the egg wash and then do it, so it'll congeal and, and help it stick on there good. Uh -huh. um, one more, let's do one more, let's do one more question here. Um, this is from, um, Tassie. Oh, she's from, um, she's in McLeod, Oklahoma. That's where my family's oh. from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we would do this with blackberries and fresh corn almost ready I have some frozen aspar asparagus would would I substitute for sassafras mm. oh so for the fish you mean right for the glaze well like I said you don't even you can just use the, the, the fruit right if you're already working with blackberries like I said we do a blackberry and wild plum but it doesn't have to be wild plums. You can go to the grocery store and get, get you know, I, I would probably get the black plums just because the nicer, deeper color, and you're going to get that from the blackberries as well. Um, even if you just wanted to do the strawberry, you could just mix it with a little bit of water and mash them up and, and thicken it. Um, but it's really endless. It's just like that yeah. same process of what it is that you think is going to taste good with your fish. Um, if you even want to use cedar tea, cedar tea might be something you want to have access to. That is something um, that you could use. It's going to have a strong flavor. You might want to use something like lemon or lime with it because that's going to have that um, that taste that it comes with. It might go better with a citrus as opposed to um, like a, a fruit berry. No, I agree right with you. And then um, we also have one. This is a really good one um, since you have little, since you have little boys and. Um, which I love to see you all the time with the kids. I love that. Um, from Brandy, um, Brandy's asking for the for all the chefs. Is there a way that um, you all can send me some child gear recipes? I'm doing a class that shows kids how to make healthy simple snacks. And um, go ahead, Tanya, because you have. Yeah. A well, yeah. I was gonna say one of them. I would say just like the hominy that we made today, um, doing a quick saute like that is great. It doesn't even have to be cooked if you want to just use hominy. Rinse it really well, um, especially if it's like a canned one because it does have that nice taste. So I just make sure you rinse it really well. You can even just mix that with berries and frozen berries um, will impart a nice color. It will make all of the, the corn turn like pink and purple. Um, and some of those things are good like as, as a perfect food for toddlers because they're the little pieces and they can pick them up themselves and you're not going to worry about them choking on anything. Um, so I think that would be a perfect meal for kids because you're making it sweet as well. You can put maple syrup on it and then the same thing you can replace that instead of using hominy corn you might want to use wild rice um and those things can be made into like a like a regular rice pudding and uh that's i think when, like when you're feeding kids give them something sweet they're gonna usually more go for it trust you more than they are for the savory flavors so usually if i'm cooking for kids i try to work in a lot of our berries and that um we're bringing chill flavors like the corn and stuff that's gonna it's gonna taste like the berries as opposed to <laughs> and kebabs kebabs are always good for a lot of uh, stuff if you want to grill things vegetables and things like that and put like a, some type of sweet sauce like i said it can be maple it can be you know whatever uh honey and all that stuff too yeah, so anything anything sweet yeah that's such a good idea especially with the kebabs um especially with the kids because that's something they can ha they can hold their south and they also can say hmm yeah and even participate <laughs> with i've done that a lot too and then we also have a, um, a question from what were some of the basic ingredients in the sauce what we just talked about in the sauce is sweet go ahead you can answer that one um, for the fish there it's just sassafras tea maple and strawberries yeah. very yeah, simple that was the only thing that was in there very very simple yeah and there's a little bit of water because you have to mix up like your cornstarch right but i tried to use a little littlest amount because I don't want to dilute the flavor of the tea but yeah so what you do is you make your tea put your sweetening in there somebody's trying to call me <laughs> okay so um, you're going to make your tea and you have your tea ready and while it's still hot you can put some maple in there and then just try it like that like sweeten it to your liking do some people might like it super sweet some people might be more savory um so just sweeten it to your liking and then like I said we take about two cups of tea so you probably take about two tablespoons of cornstarch and then like a, uh, just a little bit maybe a quarter a cup of water just enough to, to thin it out so you can add that and, and, um, and then you're going to boil it 
bring it up to hard boil for about a minute and you can see it because it'll be cloudy and, and it'll turn transparent after and that's when you know that the the corn starts is off the too. Oh, I love that. Okay, we're gonna we have enough room for just a few more questions. And then we also have George asking a question. He said, such a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so grateful. Is the corn he wants to know is if the corn what I mean. is in the kitchen or is it by a grower and can speak a little bit about the process? Thank you. And I think this is a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, that particular corn is uh, like a hominy corn, right? So it's a regular canned corn. I want to make sure it's something that's accessible for everybody. Um, you can definitely mix and lodge your own corn. Um, I wanted to use our traditional white corn, but somebody threw it all in the corn soup. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't have that. So I did it you know, with what I got here today. Um, so in my community, mix and lodge white corn is sold to corner stores, gas stations, things like that. There's a few people that do it down here. So it is easily accessible most of the time, as long as it's not, uh, you know, a crappy corn here and we run out <laughs> but and that happens too so um but yeah if you want to talk about an externalization process uh what you're doing is alkalizing the water so whatever you're using uh, in my area we use hardwood ashes um in the south they might use like the juniper ash uh there's also the just the lime uh, the cal cal calcium lime <laughs> that's uh more like mexican uh cuisine you'll see them use that uh, you can even use baking soda. Right? Baking soda will work. What you're doing is just alkalizing that water. So when you're boiling your corn in it, it's taking the per cap. So that outside part that gets stuck in your teeth and you're eating popcorn, it breaks that down because that what prevents our body from digesting it. So apparently it's the same way coming out as it does going in. That's why. <laughs> so this breaks that down and it also adds nutrients. So you're going to get B vitamins, um, make, let's see, the one that in it's the other one that <laughs> so anyways lots of vitamins it's going to add but calcium and um nice and nice and that's a big one um it adds those to it as well so that's why how we did most of our carbs right was to corn um because we didn't have meat and things like that and that's why um like when they went to europe they didn't take that nixtamalization process and that's when you got diseases like pellagra and um, that nixtamalized meat, because it even kills other stuff, right? Like your corn could be moldy, like be sitting or hanging or whatever. Like you don't know, this is going to take all of that off, right? You're boiling it for hours and rinsing it a few times. So all of that is adding um, nutrition into that. And if you do nixtamalize your own corn, you can feel free just to like um, freeze it after. You don't have to use it all right away. It's put in the fridge for like a good week. Um, but yeah, and, and, and any corn, uh, like I, I've done it with uh, like our Mohawk red wedding corn, the Haudenosaunee sweet black corn, we have our Tuscarora white corn, um, our blue corn. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never met a corn I don't like to be nixtamalized, but I've never tried with popcorn, but you know, I might do fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on our last question. Um, this is a good one. Um, do you have a favorite farm that you buy your maple syrup from? My favorite farm. Yeah. Um, what are, yes, I can't say it. It starts with a G. There's a producer up here, but the husband's from up north and the wife is actually from my territory. So that's how I got introduced to them. Um, I don't know if I have any of their product right now. And then there's the Zebulon Farms as well. I usually contact them for, um, for the maple sugar that we use. But there are tons of indigenous um, maple producers and they all make excellent products. I would suggest any one of them. Yes. And there's times when I do source my maple, I always kind of like um, source them just for like maybe two, maybe two or three, just because you um, kind of want everything to stretch and not just for mm -hmm. your business and for your own self, but also just kind of um, support other indigenous business owners on that part. And then um, last question, Tanya, <laughs> do you have a written yummy recipe for the dish? And I would love for you to talk about more of that because you have the magazine coming out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was telling everybody in the beginning that this recipe will be available in the July edition of Chatelaine Magazine. Um, so yeah, that's why I want to make it here today. And it was our lunch special that we made. Um, I do have a website I've been trying to get to. Um, we're actually starting filming a nine part series for APTN. So in Canada, it's the Aboriginal People's Television Network. And we are going to be filming it some in the kitchen, some around it. It's all going to be based around um, Haudenosaunee and um, Six Nations and 
kind of what it is we go through to get our source our ingredients because um, it's a lot of relationships, right? It's a lot of relationship building to be able to do that. Um, so I've kind of neglected my website, my YouTube channel for the last little bit, and I've been meaning to make um, one just to say, okay, sorry, this is where I've been. Somebody kind of got a call one day, you take you to this restaurant or no, and I wasn't going to say no. So <laughs> some of the other stuff had to, my COVID projects had to kind of get pushed aside there. And like I said, now we're doing the television series. Um, We'll be starting filming tomorrow and then through to about the middle of July. But I'm hoping that in the early or sorry, late summer, early fall, that I'll be definitely um, uploading a lot more content to uh, my YouTube channel and to the website as well. But yeah. if you want to check it out, it's ChefTanyaBrand.com. And then uh, Chef Tanya Brand on YouTube. I also have um, an Instagram page. Uh, my personal one is Chef Tanya Brand. I do have one for Yuego. If you can see my shirt, I spell Yuego. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's it so it's Uego, um on Instagram and then Uego by Chef Tanya Brandt on Facebook mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of pages <laughs> <laughs> I love that and I'm so proud of you and especially as a mother and a um, restaurant owner um, how do you keep all that balance um, just you know being an indigenous chef and doing your filming your restaurant Oh, there goes this, this is how I keep my balance. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Crystal. How are you? I'm doing great. Nice to see you. You guys got to yeah, come. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> you just happen to stop in for lunch, so. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so that's my balance. Definitely needs to support team. It's a lot of work and a lot of, I don't know what's going to happen today, but it's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, you know, kind of like organized chaos, sometimes disorganized chaos, but at the end of the day, I think the only thing you can do is look at is what do we have to accomplish today and, and set goals and definitely meeting those goals are um, something that keep, keep pushing you right and, and makes you want to do better. And um, it's just, it's important, especially for an indigenous chef, you can't be stagnant, right? You can't quit moving, you can't stop. You lose your drive, you lose your inspiration in, in reaching for those things and meeting and networking and talking with other chefs are what are going to make um, you successful in these endeavors. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking this is this is pretty much it. Um, it was really nice. Um, seeing you cook and it was really nice just the, um I smell the sassafras right now <laughs> and then also I'm here, I'm also here in New Mexico and so I'm actually going to go have lunch with Ray <laughs> over over <Awesome>. yeah <laughs> tell him, yeah I have to tell him um just about I said her. hey <laughs> she said hey <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it was really nice to see the fish and I'm probably going to order fish now. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> well, you'll have a lot of nice choices down there. I'm not, I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I would like to thank, I would like to thank both of you. Thank you to Chef Tanya and Chef Crystal for a wonderful, wonderful demonstration. Yeah, and no. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, uh, our next uh, chef is uh, going to be Loretta uh, Barrett Oden, uh, which will be July 13th. So the link to register for that is in the chat. And again, thank you everybody for tuning in. And thank you for a wonderful presentation, uh, Tanya and Crystal. Do either of you have anything that you'd like to add? Any final words? Oh, I, I like to um, have a few final words. I just like to say it was a pleasure um, at all these months of um, seeing all these beautiful indigenous women coming together and cooking and us. Uh, yeah, the same. I uh, let's say same as Crystal uh, Yamagoa, and I'm really happy um, that you asked me to participate. I was quite honored to be asked. And I'm kind of an indigenous chef. Uh, you can say that it's a great. It's, uh, sometimes it can be a little bit of a problem. Um, see all the chefs merging, people getting into this cuisine, and that we're networking. It's just definitely awesome because all of that knowledge getting together is only helping every country and everybody. So that's what can be well awesome cuisine for us. So just 
definitely good and I appreciate being asked and I uh, hope some of you get to try this recipe and hopefully Stephen Moore of you will even get to come into a restaurant someday and I'd be happy to, you know, do it again anytime. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thank I you. love you. Very nice. No problem. And you know, you're doing episodes, so. <laughs> thank you both so much and thank you for everybody you who's tuned in today and we'll see Thanks. you all next month. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bye bye everyone. Yes. Hold on, thank you.